Hello again. Well, here's another video, this time to take you, the viewer, through the methods that I use to remove the cartilage from the ears of a white-tailed deer. I'm going to cover skin prep on it. We're going to cover trimming and fitting the ear liners in place. And I'm going to show you the installation of at least one of the ear liners into the deer's ear. Um, I hope this is educational and entertaining for you. Uh, I know I get a blast out of doing this, so let's get First started. First of all, I'd like to point out the measurements I take on the deer prior to skinning. As you can see here, we have measurement taken, the length of the ear from the V-notch to the tip, and then across the ear from the widest point on the leading edge to just under the fold of the ear, okay? <clears throat> These, along with a bunch of other measurements that I take, are recorded and are used to help in determining the proper size of the head form, the fit in various places on the form, and of course, I record the length and width of the ear. Some ear form manufacturers suggest that you go around the outside perimeter of the ear. I don't do that. Um, this was a method from the old Buckeye mannequins catalog where they show the ear measured from the V-notch, the V-notch right here, to the tip of the ear, okay? And then, again, from the widest point of the leading edge of the ear to just under the ear fold at the top. Those are the, those are the measurements I use, and that's the way we're going to proceed, removing the cartilage and fitting the ear liners to the deer. Okay, here, here's the little buck that we're going to be using for our demonstration today. This was a... Uh, buck that was brought into me on he was taken on October 7th it was brought into me just a couple of days later and as you can see from his antlers he still had velvet on his antlers not only that he has a very very short coat of hair that makes for a very interesting mount so interesting in fact that I'm using an old set of ear liners that I got from uh, Buckeye mannequins, when they were still Buckeye mannequins, they are now Ohio Taxidermy Supply. Uh, this was one of the first sets of ear liners that they ever put out. They first put them out in a dark red color, and this will be great for this short-haired deer. He's not the shortest-haired deer I've ever done, but he has short hair for an October deer in Ohio. Now, one of the ears has already had the cartilage removed. Uh, this was done yesterday. Here's the ear cartilage. You can see how ear cartilage dries and shrinks. Now imagine if you had something like Bondo in the ear. Uh, you give that ear about a year or two and the edges will curl. The tips will curl. At any rate, the ear liner chosen had to be trimmed down per the measure, well, per the pre-fitting after the cartilage was removed. I pre-fit the the unaltered ear liner discovered where it was a little too big, trimmed it down, and you, I'll be doing that later in the video. Uh, and then I scraped it up, scored it with this um, form rougher that I got from Joe Combs uh, Supply, uh, Combs Classics. And to get in the tight area here under the front fold, I use the narrow stout rougher. Now you got to be careful using the stout rougher, okay, because this tool has some very sharp teeth on it and it can and has ripped through, actually cut through the plastic ear liners that are on the market. So you have to be careful. At any rate, uh, the ear was trimmed to fit, checked against my measurements, refit up into the ear skin and all is well. Now we're going to go, I'm going to go and start on the second ear. One of the things that I do besides punching 
the control number, the invoice number, in, in the base of the hide, uh, up along the back uh, between the shoulders, I take these numbered tags from Jonas, from Jonas Brothers Supply, they, they made them, okay, and I'll sew through Mackenzie. I then take a zip tie, put it through the ear tag, the plastic tag, then I take a three-cornered punch. I punch a hole through the base of the cartilage. This is after the ear is already turned and just before salting. I tighten the zip tag down, the zip tie down, and that stays with the ear. So now I have identification of the deer with a control number that matches the number on the deer's antlers, on the deer's cape, and in case the cape gets damaged at that area for whatever reason, I have this number tag in the ear which will now be removed using a heavy duty lineman's scissors, cut, and remove the tag. This is all part of my record keeping system. Now turn the ear inside out and what you see, this, this was a wet tanned cape done by the Wildlife Gallery up in Michigan. They do an excellent, excellent job. There's plenty of stretch on this. This is an alum tan. I prefer the alum tan over all the new synthetic tans. The alum tan will last much longer. Uh, it has a good shelf life. I have an African lion in my living room that was mounted in 1997. Uh, no tears, no rips, no errors, no dry rot. The thing is in pristine condition. And that was tanned by a uh, new method in California, Pepe Tan. I didn't send it there to be tanned. The taxidermist I purchased the lion skin from sent it out there to be tanned. Now we're going to begin. Uh, I like to use paring knives. I like to use a straight paring knife, what they call a bird's beak paring knife or a curved tip paring knife. I will use a skyf knife, which is done in leather work. I will use this little wooden form I made up. It's basically ear shaped, flat on one side, rounded on the other, and this will be used later in helping to separate the very edges after the cartilage is fully removed. And you can see here, one little end broke off, so um, it still works. Of course, brush for brushing the hair later, and a scissors for helping to uh, detach any tendons that are adhering tightly. Uh, I also like to use a little cloth to help grab it. The skin has been washed to remove any excess salts and uh, overages of oils that are, in the, that are in the skin. They do oil the skin even though it's a wet tan. And that goes a long way in, in helping to keep it from drying and shrinking incorrectly. It will dry with less shrinkage when it's oiled. Okay, all this said, let's stop the BSing and get to removing the ear cartilage. All right, so let us begin. I like to start by uh, separating the skin from the cartilage along the very edge here. And the way I do that is take the tip of my parry knife and hold I hold it by the blade and I start separating, or I should say further separating the skin from the cartilage. I don't go, this, I don't go into this much detail as far as splitting before the skin is salted and then of course sent to the tannery, only because if you do that prior to tanning, what can happen is during the tumbling process, and they do tumble them, the ear could possibly blow out because this is very, very delicate skin. What we're removing is the cartilage, which is adhered tightly to the front of the deer's ear, okay? When we turn the ears, we turn this back skin of the ear away from the cartilage, but it adheres to the front of the ears. Now I'm going to do a little more separating 
splitting, I should say, before I begin the separations. Now, I always have and always will put little nicks in the ear. I'm not graceful <laughs> by any means. Uh, some, some folks like to take the base of the ear off immediately. Um, it is a good practice. The new ear liners that are on the market today have an interior ear detail, which you can see here, a little light on it, there we are. Uh, these old one, the old ear liners had them. The newer ear liners have them. And that inner ear detail, believe it or not, at one time, <coughs> At one time, I did <laughs> strip the cartilage all the way down and leave that intact. I used to make my own ear liners out of Celastic, which is damn near impossible. You, you can get a new type of Celastic. It's not as good as the original, but um, regardless, it's a lot easier to just remove that. Now, I'm starting on the top edge the curved edge of the ear. I'm starting along here. The cartilage is thickest right along this point here. And that makes it easier to remove the ear skin from the cartilage in the very beginning. Now that I've got that along with the very sharp, sharp knife, I'll take my little curved tip or bird's beak paring knife and I'll get in. What I try to do is I either keep the blade exactly parallel with the skin and the cartilage and while I'm doing this I'm pulling down on the skin with my thumb pulling down and lifting away with the knife. Uh, I, I like to leave it parallel every, parallel every now and again. I will tip the knife up towards the cartilage so that the tip does not go down through the ear skin. Now, again, it's the front of the ear we're separating. If you make a hole in the front of the ear, not to panic. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the mount. I've done it. Some deer adhere. Some have scars in the front of their ear. And it allows for boo-boos to be made. When that happens, some Tecbond Black which is simple, black is simply their thick, their thicker super glue. And I, on the front of the ear, I will use a piece of clear plastic as a patch so that the ear color from the ear liner and my paste, my ear paste, will show through. Now I get this loosened up first. This was a skinning hole made during a skinning process right here. I need to work this away from the hole. Now I'm going to go around the entire circumference of the ear and continue to separate the cartilage, not by much. Along the edge, there are what look like suture holes. Best description I can, I can, I can give it. There are what look like suture holes, or if you're doing like uh, uh, modeling, uh, model railroading or, or miniature model building, they look like little tiny nail hole effects. These adhere tightly to the front of the ear skin. What I'm doing first and foremost is removing the attachment point of the cartilage to the front of the skin just past those nail hole effects. Okay? And I'm just going to keep going like this all around the ear. I'm also going to continue to split the ear as I go, freeing up the cartilage from the ear. By doing that, you assure that you have a much thinner edge. And you can see the knife under the knife tip under the cartilage. Because again, I'm tilting the knife blade, the, the business end of the, of, the, of the blade, the sharp end, I'm tilting it up ever so slightly. I'm slicing and pulling the cartilage away from the front ear skin. 
go here and split over here some more. Now, when I get up to the tip, this skin is very, very thin, all right? And sometimes it doesn't pay to try and get the knife up in between the cartilage and the skin where the ear is its thinnest. You will put holes. I will put holes in it. Let's put it that way. And what I do here, I go back down to where it's thickest. Start thinning it like so. Not thinning, or rather splitting it like so. Separating the cartilage from the skin, just like so. It takes longer to do this while I'm explaining than it actually does to remove the ear cartilage from the ear just without instructing people how to do it. But you see what we've done here, what I've done, all right? The separation has been made. Now, with that, I'm going to flip over to this side. I'm going to make sure that this side is... Now, this is the long edge. This is the leading edge of the ear. Now, it's flipped over, so we're looking at like so. We're going to start separating the, the skin and cartilage from the leading edge of the ear. First, I, I begin by splitting. I continue to split the ear from the cartilage, most important. Like so. Again, pulling down with the thumb just to create tension between the cartilage and the ear skin. Okay. Now at this point, and you can see there's a little bit of cartilage left on the skin here. That'll be removed in a shaving manner later on. I don't care if I leave cartilage on the ear. That will be removed later. I do not want to leave holes in the ear skin at all. If I can at all avoid it. <laughs> but uh, the human being that I am, being what I am, I'm kind of heavy-handed and I just have a... I work with a heavy hand. Now, I begin by separating the cartilage here on this ear as I did... On this side of the ear, I should say, as I did on the other side. This is a little more delicate operation. You want to be really, really, really super duper careful here. Now, you can see the cartilage that was left attached to the ear is being removed here at this point where I had split past it, like so. Sorry about that, but that's what happens when you have a compressor in your shop. <laughs> ah, yeah. All right, here we go. Separating the cartilage from the skin. Sometimes it works if you turn the blade around and go the opposite direction. And here we have now the cartilage away from the skin. Alrighty. Okay. Now, at this point, I want to continue on down and around the ear, splitting and separating the cartilage as I go. Okay, I've turned the ear back over to the first side I was working on. And now I'm going down along the base of the cartilage. And I'm removing the cartilage from the skin I want to carefully carefully dissect around the V-notch 
Now around the V-notch there, there is a detail. That can be seen right here. There is a, a little hole. A little indentation. It's part of the it's part of the hearing system of the deer. This is another uh, like sort of little echo chamber, I guess you could call it. And you have to be aware that that little hole is there when you're uh, going around the base of the ear at this point. And there it is. That's actually the front of the ear. Okay, I put a little hole there. Of course I did. What else is new? All right. Now, now that I've got that done and cut around, I'm going to take my real sharp paring knife and I'm going to remove the ear base cartilage. I want to start a little further down than I need to. And I want to go straight through to the back of the ear. I want to get all this heavy material off. That is now removed. And like I said, all this detail in the inner ear is replicated in plastic. Okay, the only thing that's not there are the little tiny fuzzy wuzzy hairs. And for a competition, you can use flocking or you can go ahead and you can skin that all the way around, use an ear liner without inner ear detail, and simply rebuild that in its place, in its stead. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to continue to remove the cartilage from the ear all the way around the base. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. This is where I like to use a cloth to dry my hands. And give me a good firm toe hold or thumb hold as it were, so I can separate the cartilage from the ear skin. And yes, that tiny little hole has grown. As I manipulate the skin, this has gotten bigger. Not a problem. That can be stitched or glued with super glue, a cyanoacrylate glue. And it seems I did put a little hole in the front ear skin, which will be repaired later. It happens. It happens. That must have been adhering hard enough or tight enough that it was able to slip past the tip of my knife. Plus, looking into the into the view screen here of the camera and doing this instead of watching what the hell I'm doing doesn't help the situation any. But I'm doing this for you, the viewer. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> okay, now, what we have going on here are the adhering little tendons and fascia that help hold the ear tight to the cartilage, the ear skin tight to the cartilage. These need to be carefully sliced through as we go. Otherwise, they will hold tight enough and it will allow you to pull a hole, a rip, into the front ear skin. And we don't want to do that. I don't want to add another one. Let's put it that way. I have that one. I don't want any more. And here we go like so. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Now I can grab... The, the ear skin together to get a good grip and press down 
pressure with my thumb. It's good to keep your thumbnails pretty short. Uh, otherwise, it can get a little painful. You get something under your fingernail. It's like uh, Chinese bamboo fingernail torture. Ooh, not a good thing. And you can see where it was adhering. There's actually a little damage to the back of the ear. Now here, here's a perfect example of the little tendons I was referring to, okay? Right here. It's a little tendon right here holding onto the ear. You can pop it free. They're not that strong, but they are strong enough to cause a hole to form in the ear skin. Sometimes you can break them away. Other times they need to be cut away. Now we're coming around to the we're coming around now to the leading edge of the ear where we started removing the, the cartilage from the skin, started paring it away. Now, over here, I will need to you you need to untwist it every now and again. As you work with the ears, they tend to twist on themselves. I'm going to separate this with a knife at this point. I want to be careful and make sure I have a good eye on what I'm doing. I'm going to leave some of the cartilage attached and pare it away at a later time. Perhaps, perhaps not. Let me see. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Let's get this little guy right here. Let's get this off of here. Get the knife underneath. Pair up. Cut up. Slice up. Slice down. And around. And it's free. And the holes are minimum over there. Now this little bit of cartilage will be removed. This will be pared away, shaved away. So you can see how that's separated right there. And now, pull that free. I'm just going to cut that. Free, free, cut it free. It is free. Okay. And we continue carefully. Hey, I'm not fast, I'm not slow, I'm half fast. And that's what I tell my clients. How soon will you get it back? Well, it's going to be a while. Why is that? Well, I'm not really slow, but I'm not fast. I'm half fast. I'm just real careful. I, I'm, by nature, I'm pretty darn clumsy. So I like to be as careful as I can in, in this respect, in this field. And you can see the little bit of cartilage that's left on the ear, that will be removed later. The whole point right now is to remove the bulk of the cartilage from the ear without doing any more damage than has already been done. And off it comes. And we now have a removed ear cartilage. You didn't miss much. What I didn't show on camera was just going along this tiny edge. That's real careful work. And I need to be right on top of it with my eyes and my glasses and my knife. Now, I want you to notice how thin, okay, the edge of the cartilage is. All right. Now, on an ear liner, you can see the ear liner is not that thin. The ear liner will be made thin via filing and shaving and sanding. And it will be made thin, yet be strong enough to support that ear skin. Now, the cartilage is put aside, and I'm going to remove all the little strands of cartilage that are left adhering to the tip portion of the ear. I'm simply going to take the knife and work under them 
and work them away. I want to pair under them. You can see it's splitting it away. And I grab and pull it away. Sometimes I will use a pliers to grab hold of the skin only because it's so slick. I mean, not the skin, the cartilage. Only because it's so darn slick. Alright, that's good. That's good. Here we have a little bit of cartilage right here along the ear. Now it's all a matter of doing some cleanup. Just some cleanup that needs to be done. Once you get a finger hold, toe hold, you can peel that right away. It's gone. Same thing here. Again, this is that cartilage area I spoke of earlier where it was adhering. And again, this will be simply pare it away. I don't want to leave it. I want it gone because it can interfere with the way the skin dries. Stretch it over the finger, make it kind of tight. Gently pair against it, grab hold, and if when, when need be, we'll grab a little pliers, like I said, I wasn't kidding, and let the pliers pull it away. And then it's pretty much gone. You want to be careful that you're not pinching the skin and yanking on the skin. You don't want that. Okay, this became a nice big hole, so that will be repaired. Most likely, I will... I'll probably glue that and put in a piece of... Um, a piece of uh, latex glove. This little one here... And you can see how there's a little flap of skin that can fold over this area. I'm going to put my little ear form in there, up in the skin. And this will allow me to follow the shape of the ear. And it will allow me to make this repair. Where is it? There it is. We'll make this little repair here. No, wait, that's not the one. No, here it is. That's the one that happened later. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to use a piece of plastic. I just cut a piece of plastic off this clear bag. This is what the deer cape came back from the tannery in. And I'm going to make a little tiny patch, just a little tiny patch. And the main thing is the ends of the little patch will be rounded. Cutting it straight right here, but it will then be, the ends will be rounded so that they will easily lay flat. Okay, there we go. That's that. Now, I'm going to put the little patch over here. It's right there. And I'm going to put a little drop of the tech bond glue black simply is their color code for their product it's not that it's black it's clear for sure I'm going to take a modeling tool and I'm going to apply some glue to the skin I'm going to fit the, going to fit the injury the cut together I'm going to put a little bit of glue to the injury, the cut. I'm going to lay the flap. There is a flap because the knife sliced against it. I'm going to put the flap of skin in place. It's all a matter of working it with your fingers. Uh, they also 
Techbond will supply you with a little spatula for making repairs like, such as this. And it presses it down. This way you can avoid getting the glue on your fingers, although I do like to press once. If you keep in mind that cyanoacrylate glue was actually a result of the space program back in the 50s and 60s, and it was designed for, when they discovered it, they thought it would be useful for neurosurgery. You cannot stitch nerve endings, but you certainly can bind them with the glue. Now the glue that I put over the over the opening will have the clear plastic put on top. And it is kind of hard, it is kind of tough to see. It's kind of tough to see for me, and I've got the strong glasses on and whatnot, but it is there. Now the band-aid is over the boo-boo. When the band-aid goes over the boo-boo, I put a little bit to the surface on the plastic and I will spread it around with the modeling tool. Now I will press contact again with the plastic spreader and we have a clear repair. I cover my glue on. And right here is the repair. There we are. Repair is there. There is the repair. A shiny spot that's reflecting the light is the little piece of plastic. And it's it's on there good and tight. The glue is starting to set. Anyway, what I was saying about it being used for neurosurgery, it works excellent for adhering moist flesh tissue together, which is why it is so good at putting your fingers together. Uh, let's repair this other little doohickey over here. Saw the little one that tore away. There's that. Get a little piece of plastic. Round off the edges. And put it in place. Now the plastic is on the boo-boo, the bandage is on the boo-boo, let me see if you can see this, let's clarify, there we go, and you can see the plastic is on the boo-boo, and a little bit of glue on the surface, which will run off to the edge. And I will spread that with the plastic spreader. It's amazing. It will stick to all sorts of things. And it won't stick to this little spreader. Uh-oh. Fucked up my focus. Muffed up my focus. I don't want to put any holes in the edge of the ear here. So I'm just going to be very, 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 very careful. I do want to pull off some of the tendons from the back ear skin. Now, we'll pull this out. There we go. And so we're going to turn it around, actually, so that the curved end is at the back ear skin, so I can work on removing these tendons.